Hey guys, this is Ahmed uh, talking from Silden Tutorials. Today in this video I'm gonna install Sequid on my VPS server that is based on to 6 Linux distribution. So I'm gonna do in this video just installing Sequid and after that I wanna enable the username password authentication so that uh, I test it on my browser. I have my Mozilla Firefox and I would like to test the internet connection and check my IP address before and after the setting. So let's jump in. So uh, this is my VPS. I'm gonna connect SSH right now. And this is the password. So I have 64 bit and it is red hat which is CentOS 6 6.5 so I'm gonna install yum minus y sequid sorry yum install minus y sequid by the way there are many ways that you can install the sequid you can compile sequid you can uh, grab the RPM package and install it manually using the RPM tool or you can install it directly from the repository as I have just done right now using the yum command right so it say that the sequid package installed and those are the dependencies also uh, installed with it right so if I say etc init to d sequid status it is down so I'm gonna say start and I'm gonna say etc init the sequid status it say that there is a problem it could not determine the host virtual the, the public host name and the solution is I'm gonna add the, the switch.conf the visible host name directive I'm gonna say etc sequid sequid.conf and in the top I say visible host name seldom tutorials right after I do that I'm gonna say etc you need to do the sequid restart Now we're still restarting the service. Let's check status, and it say that the sequid is running. But from my perspective, I always try to find the logs from the cache log, which is the most important file in sequid. So the directory is, um, I say tail f var log squid cache.log right so this file give you an indications how the squid process is going on so if you find any errors right there you have to investigate the sequid.com file and try to find where is the error so obviously there is no problem but I would like to have a quick look on the configuration file etc sequid sequid.com and this is the basic configuration as you see uh, this is the local board of sequid 3128 and this is listening on the server so I can say init state minus a and t and grab listen to see which board that's listening and I have 3128 that is listening right 
but so far I cannot connect to that server because there is no rule set that allow my IP address to be uh, whitelisted to access the server but in this video I'm gonna I'm gonna use the username and password right so I'm gonna open up the authentication for all the users for all the IPs over the internet but only the user that have the username and the password sorry that they have the, the correct username and password that put it uh, correctly in the server he will able to access the proxy right so I'm gonna copy this directive that's gonna be used this uh, authentication parameters right it's called basic ncsa-auth which is the SQL library that is used to uh, to enable SQL to have a username and password from external users from the external user over their browsers so that they are whitelisted after that so those are the configuration files that needed so I'm gonna copy and paste as well in the SQL file I'm gonna hit in the button the top sorry and before I continue I would like to say where is SQL right it say that SQL exists in user lib user lib SQL so if I say user slash user lib 64 bit SQL basic NCSA or NCSA you know it may be changed from distribution for other but it should be matched exactly right here right so again if you install SQL on Ubuntu if you install SQL on Windows if you install SQL on CentOS, CentOS 6, CentOS 7 you have to know the exact location of the SQL library you can do that by saying where is SQL right once you do that it will give you the destination you might say slash user slash lib if you were 32 bit but since I am 64 bit it's gonna say slash user slash lib 64 bits so you're gonna fix right here right so don't be confused in that setting so again I say I, first of all I want to test slash user lib 64 bit right then SQL and you know I'm, I'm hitting tab I'm just hitting tab if I say basic NCSA it's not exist it may be NCSA or basic dash NCSA right so it is basic on the 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 current distribution that you're using right now so in, in my video it seemed like the current and uh, the correct directory is as I have just copied right here great and I'm gonna copy uh, so that being copied and move to sequid.com etc sequid sequid.com and I'm gonna remove the old lines I'm gonna update right here right I'm gonna save then I say sequid sorry etc NADD service sequid restart I'm gonna wait so we have another file that is right here right so the username and the password that you're gonna create right now will be will be stored in that file etc sequid squid dash user right so how, how I'm gonna create I can use the HTTP so this tool that is called HTPass, the pass WD this tool can help me to, to create the local username and password on my server right so right now the server that is not ready for the username and password so I'm gonna say hey SQL please create to me using this tool a username and password right in that file that I put here right with the username seldom tot and password is seldom tot Well, you know, I want to make it simplify one, two, three, four, five, six, and the password is one, two, three, four, four, five, six, right? 
So I'm going to copy that and say, come on and create. Oh, say that the HTTP SLD is not found because it depends on the package HTTPD. So I'm going to install HTTPD package Apache yum install minus y httpd by the way httpd is the same as apache but it's called httpd in CentOS and it's called apache when we are using Debian or Ubuntu right so let's try the command right now to see if it works uh -huh. as you see it accepted the command so this is again this is mandatory for the setup that we need and I'm gonna restore all of them to the default so that it be clear in the tutorial and now I think the SQL is ready so before I connect to the SQL I can do basic test like I can say tilnet with my IP address to check if the server that is listening on the port or not right so I'm gonna tell it that number which is on my IP address then the port 3128 as you see it say that it's connected to the server so now I can go to my browser I'm gonna copy that and I go to my browser and put here the IP address and the port 3128 I'm using the default one and hit OK then let's try to open up a website So I'm gonna test from my computer. By the way, I have wrong time in my computer right now, so that's why it's refusing any HTTPS connection, you know? If I open up CNN, it's gonna work. But you know, I would like to test it from another computer. I'm gonna open that. Internet options, setting. in the connections, LAN setting right there in the port 3128 okay, okay and let's try to open up our website so we say the proxy is not responding All right, so the proxy is not responding I can check the file var log sequid cache.log Alright, we have a problem. So what the problem is, we have a problem right now. The sequel, sequel .conf. Mm, I think this file, we have forgotten to create this file, you know? I think so. If I say ls-l that file, no, it's existed. I'm gonna say sequel-k parse. Mm. all the stuff are okay so why is not working I'm gonna kill sequid kill minus nine sequid p grip sequid all right sequid is not running Now I have just restarted Sequid. I don't know, it may be not working or maybe shut down. I have just started it and I can add it to the startup configuration once you reboot the server so that the Sequid start automatically. So I'm going to use the check config Sequid on. Right? And you can verify check config minus minus list and you say grab 
SQL and you can see that it is on for the run level 2 right I'm gonna I'm not gonna go deeper in those settings so let's try 1 2 3 4 5 6 1 2 3 4 5 6 I'm gonna say okay and we can verify if I logged in or not for log swig access dot log mm -hmm. I am connected right now I'm gonna say what is my IP address so this is the SQL that has the IP address and this is the traffic that indicate that it is working So this is the IP address and it is working right here and we have completely set up the SQL using the username and the password on CentOS 664 bit. Uh, if you want to change the password right for that user you can just copy paste the same command the same command you can copy and choosing here the password as you like you know once you do that command it's gonna replace the old username that exists in that file so again I have just installed the SQL package using the yum install from the CentOS repositories right and I added to the sql.com file the visible host name and this is mandatory for the SQL so that it work and be running in up then I uh, I did not set up the IP authentication. I just set up the username and password authentication. So my port that is uh, 3128 is going to be open for the, all of the internet, right? Uh, from my perspective, I would, I don't like, I don't recommend this setting. But this is just for uh, educational video, and it is just in the basic steps so that you understand how it's going on. Right, so in the production and in real life, try to avoid that port, and you you have to um, create more and more for the security on your server, right? So this is the tool that's gonna match the NCSA. NCSA, you have always to check up for the NCSA, and I showed you how to you look up for the NCSA usually. It exists in the slash user slash lib if it was 32 bit or if it was 64 bit usually it, it is 60 lib 64 slash sequid slash ncsa dash org then this is the file that we will set up and save the username and password inside and I have created that file using that command and created the username 123456 and the password on the right and I mentioned that we have to install the tool httpd because the httpasswd tool depend on the httpd of your server I tested it on my VMware right this is a computer and I have tested it on my VMware and all the stuff went right and this is the SegWid and I showed you that the traffic live can be monitored right here from the access.log file and then I hope this video has been informative for you and I would like to thank you for viewing next time I have to you a new video and more and more nice video in the end if you like my video kindly subscribe my channel like the video and give me a great comment thank you so much see you next time